This Sunday's Gospel reading follows on from the feeding of the 5,000. And what Jesus will do next, having had a day where he has given out so much. He puts his priority on prayer. We read how he goes up at the end of the day into the mountainside to pray. And even after a long day, Jesus makes time with his Father a priority. It's a nudge to many of us. What is our response after being busy and giving out? What is it we do to unwind after a stress-filled day? Is it people? Is it the distractions of a cup of tea or a glass of beer? Is it food? Or do we, like Jesus, seek to find a place where we can, as it were, regroup with God? and spend time with him. Jesus sends the disciples out across the lake without him. That must have felt strange for them. After all, they were Jesus' followers. They were those who were spending time with him and the idea that Jesus would send them away must have felt quite odd, particularly as they were going on a journey and leaving Jesus behind. I guess there are moments for us when God's guidance doesn't quite make sense and yet we know that we have to obey and do what he is encouraging us to do. The disciples are likely to have left the shore before it got dark, but as night fell, as they crossed the lake, so the storm emerged. And it's been my experience too of being on the Sea of Galilee when suddenly a storm has come from nowhere. Calm has been taken away by squalls and wind. And in this case, the disciples stop making progress. The boat will have become very uncomfortable, buffeted by the winds and the waves. And it must have gone on all night because the uh, gospel account tells us that it was just before dawn when Jesus walked across the water towards the disciples stuck on their boat. In the half light, the disciples were terrified. What's this figure they see? And immediately their thoughts turn to it being a ghost. Jesus speaks. Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Words of reassurance to the scared disciples. And indeed, words of reassurance to us in our moments of crisis. Hear Jesus speaking to you. Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. For Peter, it's not just the reassurance that Jesus' words brings. It's the presence of Jesus that he seeks. So much so that he wants to go where Jesus is. And laying aside all the reasons why he shouldn't walk to Jesus, he asks to go to him. And Jesus responds, inviting him, come. Peter gets out of the boat and walks towards Jesus and all is going well uh, until suddenly he realises what he's doing. Takes his attention away from Jesus and back to the storm. And in that moment of reality, fear comes but it's interesting because he still reaches out to Jesus Jesus help me and Jesus stretches out his hand in reassurance in helping Peter to regain confidence you of little faith Peter why did you doubt Jesus rescue And together, Peter and Jesus walk back across the water to the boat. And as they get into the boat, the storm subsides. All on the boat worship Jesus and acknowledge him truly. This is the Son of God. And there is that reminder to us to choose to fix our eyes on Jesus. To be careful not to be distracted, but to watch him. 
as I close, let me use these words from the song Oceans by Hillsong United. Spirit, lead us where our trust is without borders. Let us walk upon the waters wherever you would call us. Take us deeper than our feet would ever wander and our faith will be made stronger in the presence of our Saviour. Amen.